Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at Linux Mint 20, the released version, right after this. I've seen uh, quite a few reviews on Linux Mint already that have come out and, and based upon, you know, the uh, early release or beta release of the software. But I always like to wait because there's always last minute decisions that are made that are incorporated at the very last minute before they do a release. And, you know, I always like to be fair to the developers, give them just as much time as they need to really get a good release out that is, you know, that is stable and, and, doesn't, and addresses some of the problems that other users have pointed out to them. So Linux Mint 20, that's what we're going to be talking about. It's uh, The code name was Ileana. And I'll be doing my usual, let's look at it, let's talk about it, and then let's do an install, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on it. So that's what I'm hoping to do today. As always, uh, I have talked about this in the past on previous releases of Linux Mint. It's community-driven. It's based on Ubuntu and Debian. It is really, their motto is make it modern, elegant, and comfortable, but powerful and easy to use. Meaning that you might be new to Linux, you might be a new user, <clears throat> it's coming into the Linux family for the first time. They want something that'll work for you without too much pain, I mean, and, and, and too much trouble. They don't want to frustrate you, but yet it offers enough uh, power uh, in the applications that are available to you to install later on to take this wherever you want to go. Uh, it's based on the uh, Linux kernel 5.4, <clears throat> and since I know that it is based on that kernel, I will be trying this on my cantankerous laptop, <laughs> the, uh, the infamous MSI. Uh, <clears throat> also, it uh, some other highlights, XFCE 4.14, and it uses the Ubuntu 20.04 package base. Uh, the system requirements is one gig of RAM, 15 gig of disk by, uh, space and 1024 by 768. Uh, that is common pretty much as far as I have seen across the uh, distributions that I have been reviewing lately. That uh, seems to be the minimum configuration. So if you're using a monitor that uses uh, resolutions lower than that, you'll <clears throat> probably have to uh, use some keyboard gymnastics in order to shift the monitor up and down, left and right, uh, in order to accommodate. It's not that it won't work, it's just that they don't recommend that you go that you do that because it is going to be more painful for you to navigate the screens. Uh, they also recommend two gig. Uh, the recommended settings is two gig of RAM, twenty gig of disk, and of course ten twenty four seven sixty eight or higher. Uh, there is not currently a process that's documented on the website to migrate from older releases of Linux Mint, and according to the website, those will be coming out in July. I don't have a date. It just said July twenty twenty. So. Uh, I, I always assume when people say that at the end of the month, uh, that way you're not looking for it every day from July 1st on. Um, <clears throat> what is Linux Mint? It, uh, it's initially, its initial release was in August of 2006. This particular release, uh, Linux Mint 20, was released on Friday, June the 27th. Is that right? 20... No, it's, it's, it's Saturday. Saturday, uh, June the 27th. How time flies. Anyway, it's supported until 2025. One thing that uh, we'll talk about a little bit later, there are some caveats that occur. Well, we can talk about it here, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> the the uh, libraries, the versions of the libraries will be maintained on Linux Mint 20 with anything newer, say like Linux Mint 21 or 22. Uh, those, those will be maintained until 2022. Uh, and then after that, you're, you'll have a divergence in the code where you'll just have security updates until 2025. I would assume that that's what that means. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but that usually is the case. Two years of support directly and then three additional years of security updates. Uh, platforms are only, now they have dropped the 32-bit, it's 64-bit on their website. It didn't see any indication of 32-bit at all. Uh, the default user interface that you can choose from is Cinnamon, Mate, or XFCE, and you choose that based on the image that you download from the site. It uses the same release cycle as Ubuntu, although it does lag behind because they're taking their release code and creating uh, Linux Mint from that. 
Uh, it has a, a, a user rating. Now, this is not the same as counting the web hits. There is an actual place where you can go and vote on a distribution. You can vote it up or down. So, ten, one to ten scale. Uh, they currently are have they currently have an eight point seven four scale. And I didn't look at the number of users that had voted. I probably should have done that, and I didn't. <clears throat> but uh, they're behind MX Linux, which is number one right now as of the time I'm doing this video. And, and of course, that shifts around all the time. And uh, Manjaro Linux, which is number two at the moment. So they have a they have a very high rating uh, in the uh, in the world of Linux, and absolutely nothing wrong with that. So one of the new things that uh, they have added is something called Warpinator. In the old versions of Linux Mint, there was a, a, a program called Giver. And Giver was <coughs> a zero configuration file sharing utility. So if other people on the network were running Giver, then you could just select them and then start pushing files to them or receiving files from them. So you didn't have to have uh, you didn't have to copy it to a USB key and then do a sneaker net to get it to them or figure out some common server to put it on or some cloud service to drop the file on and then share those locations with them. You could just <clears throat> fire up Giver, have them do the same, and and off the races you went. Unfortunately, that project was discontinued and Linux Mint we had to remove it from the distribution. Well. They have a, a new version called Warpinator. It re-implements Giver for Linux Mint, and it can it lists all the computers on the network. Now they say that, but it it, it looks like it's the local network, of course. Now I would <laughs> I'd be a little nervous about having opening up every single system that it encounters on the internet as well. It might take some time to produce that list. No, so it's the local network, of course. <clears throat> and then you can then just select that particular user. I, I have not played with this. I don't know all the aspects of it, how it gets permission from the other user to push a file to them. So uh, that's something to play with in the future, I guess. <clears throat> so they provide open source. There's uh, LibreOffice, Firefox, Thunderbird, HexChat, Pigeon, Transmission, VLC, and GIMP. Uh, there are a number of other utilities, which I found kind of surprising to be on here. Uh, there's a couple of editors that are normally considered um, uh, commercial. So, yeah, and I saw that in the software store, and that's interesting. Uh, they do provide a mechanism where you can install provi proprietary software, such as codecs, uh, that you might need for uh, audio and video. So you can install those optionally. <clears throat> it doesn't uh, initially provide SNAP support, and I know this was a controversy initially that they were not going to support it at all, uh, but they have produced uh, some documentation that shows how you can override that if you choose to and, and allow SNAPs to install. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to get into that controversy. They have resolved it. I mean, it's, it's all about choice. If you want it, you can turn it on. If, but they leave it off by default. And generally, in my opinion, it's always better to let the user decide if they want things or not rather than turn things on and by uh, default. Uh, particularly for you know, if, particularly in the security realm, you want things defaulted to closed, not open. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying I'm not saying that it's insecure, but I am saying that there's nobody that watches that store. And I'm going to say that. Uh, until Ubuntu puts those controls in place, I consider that a hostile environment. Uh, support multiple languages can be booted from USB flash drives. Supports local volume manager. Now, uh, you can choose full disk encryption. I know in the past that on the older releases, you were not able to configure any additional partition management within uh, the LVM when during the install. <clears throat> so I'll probably poke at that a little bit today and see if you can or not. Uh, also, there was a mechanism in Linux Mint that allowed you to do uh, additional encryption on your home, home directory uh, through Encrypt uh, FS. And I remember, yeah, I remember we had looked at that when uh, I discovered it in 19.3. <clears throat> and I said at the time I was, I was going to do some digging into it, but apparently Linux Mint has pulled it temporarily. I don't know if it's back in at the time of this release, but I know that during the beta they pulled it. Uh, and the problem was is that when a user logged out, it didn't re-encrypt your home directory, so it left it in an unencrypted state. Not good. Not, <laughs> not good. So, yeah, they have pulled it. Um, that's a, I'm sure that's just a temporary bug, and that'll be fixed. 
Uh, also, it's uh, NVIDIA Optimus, which allows you to show your GPU yet, or renders both your inbuilt Intel one if you're running Intel. Uh, and also, if you're running NVIDIA, it'll show your NVIDIA uh, uh, graphics cards as well. And it allows you to switch between performance using the... Uh, using the add-on uh, GPU or uh, power savings using the Intel uh, GPU that's built into your chip. They also, also allow you to offload the GLX in uh, Vulkan to the uh, NVIDIA GPU or not. Uh, and then there's something new in the tray, <clears throat> which allows additional events to be displayed similar to the GTK menu pop-up. They've also harmonized the icons between Cinnamon, XFCE, and Mate, so it gives it a more consistent look and feel between all those platforms, which that's always a good thing. Uh, artwork improvements, uh, Mint Y theme from GitHub Project was, a, was designed to just get uh, feedback, and they decided to uh, implement it. And that, of course, allows you to pick and choose from new desktop colors, and that, that comes up on the welcome screen. And we'll be looking at that more in detail later. <laughs> which is right now. <laughs> so I guess what we'll do is I will go to my full screen here so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'll go over here to Proxmox. I'm going to be doing, I already have an installation of this up, but I'm going to create a new one. So we'll go over here to create a VM and we'll call this LM20-2. Since I already have LM20 or Linux Mint 20. And then I'll go to my my NAS again uh, and then we'll just slide down here until we find Linux Mint there it is I'm gonna be installing the cinnamon version just like I did the last time try to keep things consistent between 19.3 and 20 uh, and I'm gonna leave it at 32 like I said and I'll make this two cores and we'll jump this to 4096. I always, I always give it some headroom. This machine has enough memory to be able to do enough of this. It doesn't have enough processors to be able to have a lot of these up at once, but that's okay. <clears throat> so it should be done here momentarily. It's done. So we'll go ahead and start that up, and then I will bring the console window up so we can see what's going on. And the first thing I want to do is turn on scaling. And we'll get rid of that. And then I'll have to register. There we go. Register my mouse and keyboard. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. So let me make this a little bit bigger for you so that you can see what's going on. Hopefully that's big enough where you can see. Uh, also, I think, I think what I'm gonna do is, yeah, we'll move this over that far and I'll move this over that far. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring up the installer. Looks like Calamari's. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and... Now this is where you can install the codecs. I'm not going to do that because in the last every time I do it, I get Flash and I don't want Flash on my machine. I will do the codecs individually <laughs> when I need them. Uh, and then you have the just erase and install and then the advanced features here. It doesn't look like, yeah, it doesn't look like I can do anything there. Let me go look at something else. Now I could, yeah, I could go ahead and set it. I could set up my partition tables, but again, I can't, yeah, I, I, LVM is partitioned a bit differently than this. So we'll go back. And we'll just do a standard erase and install Linux with the default. And it's going to create a boot partition and it looks like a root partition. And that's it. I don't see a, I guess it's going to use a file for swap. I'm not keen on that idea, but I guess that's just the way the modern people do things. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's the way I do things. Okay. Okay. As Scotty said in Star Trek, you have to understand how things work before you go rushing into making decisions. That that is a old adage in in any part of this old in this business. Is if you don't understand what you're doing, all you're going to do is screw things up. Just saying. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, I uh, will come back when we get to a point where it's done. One thing I have, I was going to talk briefly about this, so I'll do it. You'll notice that we're back into this problem again. So this is not an issue with CentOS because I have, I have installed Red Hat, I've installed another Ubuntu, and I've installed uh, this Linux Mint before and, and saw the same behavior on all of them. I am thinking that this is a bug in Proxmox or in the, in the base operating system, which is Debian, on which it's based. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's a problem here <clears throat> with them because it is too consistent and is occurring across all of the releases. So uh, <clears throat> that's the only thing you can get and you can really determine from, you know, repeated experimentation. So anyway, I'm going to pause it here, and I'll be right back when this is done. Okay. It... It's finished, so I'm going to go ahead and restart it. It'll stop me just like, yeah, just like the Ubuntu does. <clears throat> and I'll go over here to hardware, and we'll go down here, and we'll just dump that. Just use the physical. And then come back over here. Re-register my mouse, hit enter, and we'll reboot it. CD-ROM is empty. Although it's it's like it is like Ubuntu where it will take uh, the order from the hard drive first, so it's not a big deal if you don't eject it, unless you don't mind, you know, unless you you don't like it being that CD-ROM being mounted on your desktop because it will be. So it's telling me, okay, yeah, this is typical with Cinnamon. It wants the hardware acceleration, and yep, yeah, I've got a connection. So. This is kind of nice. This is where they were talking about the first steps. So you'll notice that you can now theme and you can go to dark mode. So let's do the dark mode first. There we go. Oop. Let's try that again. Okay. And then we can choose whatever color we want. Let's go with the light blue so we don't look at green. Uh, also, you have a traditional panel layout and this new modern one with a larger icon set. Then that's what it's down here right now. So I'll go back to kind of the traditional look. Yeah, you told me that already, thanks. Um, you can turn on um, snapshots if you want, although I can tell you that you better have lots of disks for that. Uh, the driver manager if you need additional drivers. This gives you another chance at <clears throat> installing the codex again. You can perform system updates. We'll come back and we'll do that one. Uh, and then this is this is nice. One of the criticisms I had uh, on 19.3 is that uh, there, was, there wasn't a way to set up your default firewall and now you can. So I like that. That's very nice. Now, of course, it doesn't pre-populate it because my rules are all empty. But uh, at the start, <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. Good job. Good. I like that. Even though it's not complete, <laughs> it's close enough. It's a good start. At least it's a reminder to tell users, hey, you need to put a firewall on, um, particularly if you're on a laptop. So let's see. We have security updates, software updates, and SNPs. SNPs. We'll go ahead and try this out, see how well this works. So do I want to switch to a local mirror? I suppose I do. Probably be faster, huh? Let's see. What mirrors do I have? Let's see if I can find one in Oklahoma. It's probably closer. Yep. Let's do that one. And instead of Britain, 
Uh, University of Texas would probably be the closest to me. With that, okay. And I'll go ahead and save it and update the cache. Okay, and that should be it for this. And then it has, looks like these suggestions have all been selected already. And it tells you the type. These are security updates. This is a new kernel. And then we have some upgrades. This is nice. I, I like this. Uh, you know, you know exactly what type of updates are going on. Um, I don't know. I haven't haven't seen that that facility in Ubuntu, and I don't know if I don't use Cinnamon, so I don't know if it's an, a feature of Cinnamon or whether Linux Mint has added this. So it's telling me I need to. And I'm going to have some impact because I'm installing a new kernel. I need the new headers to go with it. Yep, probably a good idea. Asking me to confirm. I don't do my upgrades through graphical user interfaces, so if you if, if you guys are going to comment and say, well, yeah, duh, it's been doing that for years, that's fine. I'll take that. <laughs> I was just curious how they set it up. <clears throat> All right, so I'll be back. This is probably going to take a while, and uh, I'll, we'll, we'll wait till it's finished. Okay, so our system is up to date, but it needs a restart. Yeah, it would, because it's got a new kernel, and probably some drivers that need to be updated in libraries, too. So, all right, so we're done with that. I, I know I'm going to leave this to show this at startup again, in case there's something else we want to look at, and then I will go down here. And we'll do a restart. <clears throat> this seems a lot, <clears throat> a lot faster than 19.3 did to me. I, I don't know. It might be Proxmox. It, be, I did it on boxes last time, and it, it, the user interface was not this snappy. This seems. I guess I shouldn't have used that word, huh? <clears throat> but it, uh, <laughs> but it, uh, yeah, it does seem to be pretty good. So let's see what else we can do here. We can go set up the system settings. We definitely want to go do that. So I'll come up. To, I'll come back to the themes right now. I want to fix this problem. So yeah, we want. I need a little bit more screen real estate than that. And yep, I want to keep that. And I'm going to move this over here. Oops, not quite that wide. There we go. That's probably pretty good. Let's make sure I'm not. I'll push it up against my pick my uh, video. All right, so we're done. I don't know if I have to hit that again. No, I don't want to do that. I guess that's fine. Okay, so, uh, oops, I was going to stay in there, wasn't I? I was going to go look at the themes. <clears throat> We're already on a dark theme, and this is the minty white dark. Uh, I know there's some other uh, windows borders, icons, the minty white. So this is all part of that project that they did and the desktop aqua as well. Okay, nice. I guess I can... Yeah, of course it's out of date because I. So then I got some choices here of some others that I can choose. There's the Minty y, uh, X Dark, Graphite, Ubuntu Touch. Yeah, uh, I'll let you guys explore that. That's. I spent so li I'm serious. I spent so little time in the graphical user interface. It could just be a tiling window, and that'd be fine with me. Um, <clears throat> Let's see. Screens. I, I bet. I wonder which one that is. Oh, does it give me a choice on which ones I can use? Nope. <laughs> so it's basically a screen blank. Okay. 
Boo. I guess we'll be, we, you can always put up X screensaver. It's probably one of the oldest applications for screensavers that's been around. It runs on Macs. It runs on Linux. I, I don't know if it runs on Windows. It might. Um, it's been around a long time, and it's probably one of the coolest ones that you can get. I mean, it's, uh, and it's still maintained. Uh, yeah, they still maintain it. So even though it, it dates back to, oh, my gosh, probably... 1990 at least, maybe older than that, uh, but it's been around for about 30 years, 30 years plus at least. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I don't, I don't use cinnamon, so I'm afraid I'm not going to be the right guy to talk about what all the wonderful things that it will do. But I do like that setting. Software manager, I suppose we should go look at and see what packages that are available. I know that we won't find snaps in here. I know that. <clears throat> yeah, there's... So, yeah, this seems to be changing quite a bit. Uh, the last time I got some different recommends. Let's see. Uh, let's look at... BLC is in graphics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just pick one. Let's just pick that one and see what it says about it. Nice. Gives you lots of information. Gives you reviews. Uh, you know that that is a package. It's not a flat pack or a app image. Uh, yep. Calibre, Caden Live, Dark Table, lots of good stuff. I mean, th like I said, they, they have a very strong set of, of packages that will help. I mean, all of these are, I mean, this is pretty wide. This is a, a video player, and this one is used for, similar to Photoshop, where you can manipulate images. This one does vector-based art, similar to Illustrator, although... I won't, I won't put these two on the same plane as Photoshop and Illustrator. They just do functions that are similar. And Blender, which does 3D, 3D rendering, uh, although also has a very good video editor inside of it, which is kind of interesting. Uh, this is an uh, ebook manager. Caden Live is a, uh, a nonlinear uh, video editor. Dark table that allows you to manage photographs. And yeah, Ocular is a PDF, uh, PDF uh, viewer, but it also handles other formats as well. Uh, Krita is another a very good uh, package for uh, it paint, for painting. Uh, watercolors, oil type of painting. Uh, online and then there's a diagram editor. So yeah, there's a, a lot of good stuff here that you can choose from. Uh, and like I said, I mean, you can, uh, Handbrake is here, uh, which is a, that allows you to reformat videos uh, if you need to do that. So, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff there. Um, probably more complete than what I use, uh, to be honest, uh, on uh, Fedora. Uh, the package base is much more rich. And then you have FlatHub over here, Telegram, Discord, Stream, OBS. Caden. So they also have flat hub, uh, flat pack images available as well. So nice, very nice. So you can still get a jailed, uh, a jailed version of the application if you wish uh, through flat pack. Even though now th there's instructions on their site, like I mentioned, to enable Snappy if that's really what you want to do. So yep. Uh, let's see. I think that's probably a good look at that. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I don't, like I said, no thanks. <laughs> I don't, don't want Flash on my machines. Um, so, what, what? Nemo, okay. I know that they're one of the few that do things like this where they'll, they'll put kind of a best of breed of packages together and, and, make those available so 
Yeah, I know they kind of do that. But like I said, I'm not all that familiar with cinnamon. So if I'm saying something that's obvious, I'm sorry. I just don't use cinnamon. I don't. I didn't grow up with Windows, so I don't don't need a machine that looks like Windows. Some of you might. I mean, that, that's your preference. But I didn't grow up in, the, in that environment. Uh, my my foray into GUI interfaces was on SunOS, <laughs> so I'm more used to the traditional uh, the traditional Unix uh, based GUIs, which would be similar to the old. Uh, Mate or Gnome and uh, the original Gnome. So, yeah. Uh, that's what an original Unix interface looked like. So that's what I'm kind of used to. Um, do, do. Let's see what we got. So, we have an archiving app. We have a disk manager, which I assume means I can go in and partition them. And Extended. It's completely utilized, of course. Uh, I don't. I'm going to have to go out. I don't see a swap partition, so I'm assuming that is a swap file. Let's just go check that. Make that a little bigger for your benefit. We'll, we'll take a look at the space that we're using first. Um. So about 8.2 gig in the uh, root partition. And the boot UFI is only taking up, it's they allocated 500 meg and it's taking about 4K, which that's fine. It gives you plenty of room to upgrade, uh, you know, your system later on if you want to do that. Let's see what's out here in the, yeah, swap file. So that is a, oops. That is, oh, come on. There we go, 1.5 gig. So yeah, that's a little small, but that's all right. You can always fix that if you want more. Um, but at least it's better than nothing. I don't see the, huh. Oh yeah, they redirected some of it, but oh, that is totally redirected. Maybe. No. Very good, Mint. Very good. You're learning not to make the same mistakes that uh, Ubuntu makes. Very good. I'm glad to see that you. You know, I'm an old timer and I don't like to see things that are undone for no apparent reason. I, ben, like I said, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Ben was designed to be a base set of applications that you would need in the event that your other partitions would not mount. And user was usually always on its own partition. So, um, yeah, because the disk drives just weren't that big that back then. So it contained the minimal amount of set to restore your system. If for some reason uh, your user drive didn't mount, you still were able to get to it and fix it or to, to be able to find out and diagnose the problem. So, yeah, well done, Mint. Well done. Yay. Good for you. Uh, and I see library is done exactly the same way. Yes, and I do say lib. And lib was the Unix way of pronouncing lib. So lib. So if you want, it, you want to pronounce it the correct way, the Unix way, it's lib. Somebody corrected me on that, and I was like, uh-uh. Sorry, I didn't learn it that way. That ain't the way that we use that we that it was uh, defined. So, um, so I stay with what I know. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess I guess the other thing to do, since we're on this rampage, let's go ahead and install. I'm sure I don't think HTOP's here, but I'll look. HTOP here. Oh. Type it right. No, it's not. And I want, to, I don't want glances. Let me fetch. And, oh, wait a minute. I want get to. I'm sure that's not there. Also, I like the little touches that Linux Mint has done here. Um, 
it just shows that uh, you know that group obviously cares about what they're doing. I mean, the things like you know, instead of having it blank when you're typing in your password, it gives you the asterisk. That, that harkens way back to the original versions of Unix, and uh, it's nice to see a few nostalgic things return. Uh, let's see. Let's go up here to opt. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a get clone. I might as well go ahead and get this installed. Oops. Okay. I might as well go. <clears throat> might as well go ahead and run it. I'm not expecting, you know, anything surprising. <clears throat> Yeek. So I, uh, yeah, I, I noticed that system D thing again, and uh, this is not Linux Mint's fault. This tracks all the way back to Debian and Ubuntu, the originators of 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 this. And System D didn't originate with Debian. In fact, Debian for the longest time fought it, didn't want it. Uh, but my contention would be is if you are going to enable a service inside of your distro, would you please provide a default profile for us to use that is secured? And you can find that out. You know how to do that. And and you are the one, the right people to do that, not us. And, and if you would, please, would you make it a package that we could install? So for those people that want to leave it wide open, they can leave it wide open. And for those of us that are ultra paranoid and want to lock everything down, let us do that, please. Uh, so 63, not bad. I mean, that's not that's not unusual. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm seeing the same kinds of things that I always see. So, yeah, not a big surprise. Not really a concern. Yep, IP tables not loaded. That's typical. So, yeah, pretty common. No big deal. The only thing, the only thing is, um, let me just scroll all the way back up. I mean, quite frankly, this worries me, because. I I can't show you this in a video because YouTube really really will crack down on me for showing you how to hack, but you can gain es you can gain escalated privileges from every one of these that are marked unsafe, especially if they're marked if they're running under root. So um, don't do that. But you know this is stupid to leave these open like this. And Linux Mint, this is not your fault. I'm not blaming you for this. This is not your fault. This goes way before you. So anyway, I'm off my. I get. I get off my high horse again. I go back over here. I know that's being negative, but you know that to me is that is just asking for trouble. And we we don't need that. <laughs> we got enough of that already. We don't need any more. So let's see what we got here. We have document viewer, image viewer, G note. Takes notes. Oh, nice. Redshift. Yep, seen that before. Um, text editor, USB image writer. Nice. And a formatter. I wonder if that works with, um, well, probably doesn't work with SD cards. It probably works with, and then there's Warpinator. Oh, yeah, we were going to play around with that, weren't we? I don't have any other machines up, but we can look at it. It's probably searching right now for other other users of Warpinator. Yep. It's not going to find any. Yeah. Okay. I might come back and do a do a video on that. Um See, see how it actually works and what protocols it uses. It probably allows, I don't know, uh, I know that Giver allowed you to set up if you wanted to use NFS or Samba or uh, SSH <clears throat> copies. So we have LibreOffice, a calendar. 
I really, really want to provide enough positions for you to install those. That's good, I guess. And time shift, which is the, that is the way that, that is one method you can use to back up. And that's similar, I won't say it is, but it's similar to Time Machine in the Mac OS, similar in, in features and functions. So it continually updates uh, your backup. And so and allows you to restore at any point in time. Uh, so it's, uh, you have snapshots that are taken along the way, and then it allows you to restore any point along the line. It's really good if you're in a development environment where you are doing lots of changes to your system and you're and, and you're writing lots of code. It's that that would be a helpful thing because it doesn't take much to do something wrong, and that you be if you have a you have a safety net like that, it would sure help. Um, I don't need to do that, I don't think. Yeah, we looked at screensaver already. My folders, and then my recent files, which I don't have anything going on. Uh, this is Firefox. I, I think it is pretty new. It's probably the 77 version, we'll see. Yep, seven to seven. That's very new. And then, of course, you have other browser options you could put in as well, uh, except for Chromium, of course, which in the Ubuntu world is Snappy, and so that is not available to you unless you install Snappy. Um, so, what do I think here? Let's uh, let's go over here for a second. Okay, so <clears throat> the the good uh, is very painless to install. I mean, it didn't. It, it, I don't. I didn't look at the time, but it had to be under five minutes. Uh, it and we can go back and look at the time clocks. They're 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 on the the bottom right hand corner, so you can see those. Uh, they have temporary suspended encrypt FS because it was discovered that the home directory did not <laughs> re-encrypt your files after you logged out. Good on Linux Mint for finding that one. Uh, and then the welcome screen first steps, great addition. I, I, I like the I, I like that. I mean, a new user that's coming into a system isn't going to know where to go. And so here you go. Here's all laid out for you. You can go and you can modify your themes. You can go and modify your colors. You can go set up your backups. You can go set up, get your stuff working uh, so that you have, you can have the latest and greatest software. You have... Uh, a place to configure a firewall if you want to do that, and yeah, nice, it's just nice, nicely laid out. I, I always like that. Instead of telling people, well, welcome to my distro, here's what the distro does, and good luck figuring out what it all, where it all is. They're actually showing you what, and actually launching the applications. So, and it, over time, you'll start to learn that, if you're new to Linux, you'll start to learn that those launch buttons have a name associated with it, and it's coming up in your taskbar uh, as an application that has launched, and you'll figure out pretty quickly what controls what. But in the meantime, you've got some helping hands that are, that are helping you guide you, and I think that's just great. So in the bad, uh, firewall can, is enabled, uh, is, it can be enabled in the first step, so good on, good on them. Uh, one thing I missed on this that I didn't realize until I started looking at it was they have put the bin and lib back to the way Linux uh, did it originally and the way Unix did it. Good on them. Glad to see that. Uh, also, uh, the bad. Nothing bad. Uh, I'm not going to comment about the snappy issue. They, uh, they, they have corrected their, I mean, they have at least provided an option that if you want to use it, you can. If you don't want to use it, they, you don't have, it's not on by default. So... That's good. I mean, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Um, why would I? It's choice. <laughs> the, the ugly is uh, the, it's green. Yeah, but you can change it. It doesn't have to be green. Um, uh, there is a uh, a Linux Mint database uh, Debian base if you prefer Debian. I don't think that's been updated since the last time I reviewed it because it's based on the Debian release and Debian doesn't do hasn't gotten up to eleven yet. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if you prefer Debian as the base, you have the option to do that. Uh, and also, a wishlist upstream distro. Please, 
Please, yeah, I'll say this one last time. Please give us a secure system D profile for those services that are configured and turned on. I'm not, I'm not asking you, Linux Mint. I think, I don't think this is your problem to deal with. I know that you're receiving these things upstream. Uh, I should say downstream from your, from the ones you're dependent upon. I would like to see that message go back to them. If you're going to enable, a, if you're going to enable a, a service and it's going to be turned on then make sure you have a secure profile available for it. That for our, thus for us tinfoil hat guys, uh, at least we know we're not going to be seeing high risk unsecured. We won't be seeing that when we go to look into a, a security run on the system D stuff that's running. As I guarantee you, it isn't hard to grab security to to escalate security uh, to get a privilege escalation under those machines that are running as root. I guarantee you, it ain't hard. And, uh, yeah, unless you want to be a testing ground for newbies that are coming into the hacking world, please fix that. I appreciate it. Anyway, oh, <laughs> that's, all, that's all I had for now. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this today. And uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you all again real soon, and uh, bye for now.